Hello, this is Janet16, and I'm here today to bring you an update on what's happening and going on with the O-Gauge project. Um, if you don't know, I'm going to be building a garden railway slash exhibition layout. The original idea was an exhibition layout, but I'm still doing that. It's just going to go outside as well. Um, but my main goal is to get some rolling stock sorted. Um, I haven't spent that much on O-Gauge and I don't plan to because a lot of people think it's quite expensive and it is, it is expensive but you can get bargains and you can find some great things that you can do without spending too much money. Um, for instance, my Hudswell tank, I managed to pay £150 for that which is the same price as most double O-Gauge locos and if I just turn the camera to my 40 net sets, I paid £60 for that off eBay. Um, a great buy and still one of my best buys I've ever had off eBay. And I showed a, done a review of him, he's looking really well. Um, and I can't wait to get him running behind my newly restored Mark 1 coach, uh, Mark 2 coach, sorry. So this is um, one, I, I don't know if I've done a video on it, I bought it, if you're on Facebook you will have seen it. Um, I paid £15 for it, it was um, £28, not £13 off because it didn't have coupling hooks, which that was fine with me because I can add them myself. So I've done the delivery in chocolate and cream with a grey roof. Um, the roof is okay, I, I will be slightly weathering the actual roof because I just think it's a little bit too plastic looking. But for now, it's fine. I still got to add the windows in, which I'm hoping to do later on today. Um, I did add the buffers to the ends. There you go. I don't know if you can see them. And then coupling hook. And this side, I've added a two link coupling. And that's just to connect with the new coach I've got. So I went to Thornbury Bristol Model Railway Exhibition. And I was really surprised the old gauge stuff there. And about two hours into walking around, getting some pictures, I didn't really go to buy stuff this time, which is the first time for me in five years. I usually go to exhibitions, get the bargains, like build some of my rolling stock up. But I want to really focus on the layouts and see how it could help me build my exhibition layout. And that's what I've done. I took plenty of pictures, track work. I focused a lot on the joints of where they join the boards together as well. And I talked to a lot of people about that. And I, I, it, I found out there's a third hall. <laughs> uh, I didn't even realise until like two hours in. So I went into the third hall and they had this massive store with old gauge stuff on. It was like heaven, but obviously I couldn't afford any engines. But I did ask them if they got any cheap coaches, limmer coaches. And they kept showing me these little brass ones that had been built as £125. And I said, no, I really, I really want to do it on a budget. Wow. I didn't manage. They said, oh, we do have this one because I needed a brake. I mentioned that to them. I said, I need a brake break coach, really. And I bought this one, which is a Limmer Mark 1 brake coach. Uh, there are several issues with it, like the paintwork on the handrails. But for now, I'm really pleased with it. I really needed a brake coach as well. Uh, the roof is not the right roof for the coach, which I didn't realise till afterwards. So I can sort that out after. And I'm really I'm really pleased with the coach. It's gonna go well with the chocolate cream. I probably will paint it eventually in chocolate cream, but I'm in no rush. I got the coach, I'm really pleased with it. Um I might just keep it in the maroon and hopefully get another one in chocolate and cream or something a little worse because this is in good condition, really, not enough to make me think I really need to do it up like the Mark II was. So yeah, that's the new coach. That would be the passenger train, these two together. Um, originally it was going to be this one of the brake van, but not now. So I'm really pleased with that. And I'm glad I did get this maroon one because I do want to do some um, special milk running, which a lot of these were used in the old days with the milk trains. So that's good. Um, so let's move this coach off because I do want to show you my other project which I've been doing now for about over a year and it is my little J79. Now this is a connoisseur model 
Um, I've been building this out of brass and it's gone really well. The colour is blue for one reason and that is because it's going to be um, a private owner loco. And the idea is, it's a small national coal board place. They've only got a small loco to do some shunting. And he's called Hugo, he's number 31. And I got a whole little backstory up for him, but at the moment I'm just working on him. Still got paint inside the cab. Um, the paint's kind of peeling off, I knew it would. But the paintwork on the outside is really good. There's a little blob of black there, which I was a bit annoyed about, but I'm, I'm happy with that. It's got to have a big name on the side called Hugo. Um, I'm 31. However, this will be Thomas the Tank on the Thomas days on the uh, railway on Marble Bridge Station and that. So that'd be good. He's blue. He's kind of not the right blue for Thomas, but you do. And I really wanted this blue because Gorf Racing Blue, that's one of my favourite colours in racing cars. If you type on Google, if you don't know what I'm talking about, type in um, Gorf Racing and you'll see the colour straight away. The step broke off on the bottom here, so I got to glue that on. I did glue these on because they were so fiddly, this soda. Um, I accidentally broke that off. But he's nearly ready. I'm just waiting for the wheels now. So that's another sorted. One of the other wagons I'm working on, and it's nearly sorted, just need paintwork, is this large um, wagon. I bought this off eBay for £9. Like I said, if you go on eBay, you can get bargains on double, uh, on old gauge stuff. Sometimes it does go over the price you want to pay, but for nine pound, I paid for this one. I did say eight, didn't I? It's nine. I paid nine for this one. Two pound fifty postage, or two pound eighty, I think it was. And I'm really pleased with that. I painted it up the day I got it. I straight away rubbed it down with sandpaper. This is primer coat on at the moment, so this will eventually change. But the underframe was all painted. Um, it was really dusty. The roof was also done as well. And I do like the BR, i got to say. I do like the BR at the moment on it. But I do want it to be in Great Western Dark Grey with G and W. That's what colour it was in originally. But again, it was quite tatty. There was a lot of marks on the paintwork. It's just easier to repaint it. Sorry if you can hear dogs bark. That's my dogs. Also, from the train show at Thornbury, I had to buy some wheels for it. Because the wheels I add on did not go over the points. And so I had to do that. But now it runs over the points fine. And yeah, that's another great wagon. I'm just going to put them over here. Another wagon I'm working on is this toad van. Now this is an old Lima toad van they done a long time ago. I paid £15 for this. And it was in Great Western. I wanted it to be in just BR Grey because of the one down Dean Fast Railway. So he's got sprung buffers at one end, someone's fitted, but not at the other. But that's all right. Now it's got to be a part of the mill train. Um, eventually I will buy a part side Dundas kit. And I will do that one in Great Western. Uh, the roof still needs painting. But apart from the bodywork, I had a bit of problem with spraying this one, but it's okay now. Um, we're going to have a guard in the end, of course. And I am going to put um, a light on the end of that. Not a working light, just um, I got loads of spare lamps, lamp, uh, like train lamps then. So, yeah. Also, working on at the moment is, let me just uncover him, because he's cuffed up to my uh, left brake lamp. Is this one. He's now officially finished. Uh, might need to do a bit of paint work on the roof, because in certain lights it's like red. I don't know why. I think it's the uh, primer underneath it. It's my fruit van, LNER fruit van, and I bought this last year at Formbury, and I've only just finished it. I took my time with it. Uh, Sprung buffers, free link coupling. Coupling still got to be painted black, uh, but that's a that's a five minute job. I got to do that on quite a few of the wagons. I do like the parts I've done. Das kits, they're really simple. Um, this one, like, it took me long, but that was just because. Uh, I wanted to sort the colour out and I was working on other projects. But yeah, I'm really pleased with that one. That's probably my favourite wagon I own. Talking about wagons I own, I also, you already know I got some of these uh, Dapol wagons. I got a Dapol brake van, a pillbox van coming, which is going to be great. 
Uh, the sheds come in next Monday, so sorry about that. Um, my brother walked in, so I had to pause the video and everything. Um, but what was I saying? I was saying something about parts of Dundas kits. I'm really uh, happy how they turn out. They're really good kits. I really enjoy building them. So other things I'm working on is how to wire up points because I, when I've built my double O stuff, I do it basic. I don't work on DCC. Uh, I don't wire all the track up. I basically want just to run my engine. So I just build a railway, put a track down, plug the controller in, run some drains. I've never been like adding uh, different electrics to different points. If the, if, um, the, the uh, power doesn't run to a certain part of layout, um, like my exchange yard, because that's off the main line, that's off the main power. So I just buy another controller, <laughs> basically. Do it all like that. So this point, I've had to, because it was second hand, they had cut the metal things out for the uh, interfog and that, the actual fog. So I had to solder a wire to this piece and then a wire to that piece as well. Then carry the power from the other end of the point, which is over this way, and solder it to this side. Uh, first time for me, so that's, it worked out really well. It works fine. Um, what I will do is run a train just to show you. Uh, we are testing the how the track all works and the electric, and that's one of the main steps. So I'm just going to bring my hood to our tank out. Elizabeth, number, I can't remember what number sets, and works really well, as you can see, um, I'll just change the point, as for point motors, I'm not going to have point motors on a layout, um, i got another way I'm going to do it, which I'll tell you about in a sec, mm -hmm. um, so what I'm going to do, the exhibition layout's got a point rod in, so what I do is, the point over here, where the actual part is there, that's going to be linked up to proper point modern, like a piece of uh, metal wire in there, a strong piece of metal wire. And on the side of the layout, I'm going to have levers. And what I do is pull the lever down, which it'd be like um, a minute. Say that's the lever, I would have to pull it down like that, and that changed the point. That's something I'm going to be working on very hard. To get working right and all the points be controlled like that even the outside points as well mm -hmm. so instead of using point motors that's how i'm going to do things and like i did say in the um unveiling of what i'm going to do with the railway and everything that it's going to be like a signal box i'm going to carry this piece of board that connects to the shed and outside that controls it like that so that's going to be good. That's going to be interesting. Um, like I said, I've got to work out how I'm going to do that, but that is what will happen. Um, I'm getting quite good with the free link couplings, linking wagons together. Uh, that was something I was really struggling with, but the last few days of doing this, I've got used to that because I don't want to make it simple where I see a lot of people have either special hooks, like double O stuff then, or a bar across the buffers to hook up. That's not something I want to do. I want to keep it free link. So that should be fun. As for track work, every time I go to my model shop, I buy one piece of uh, straight Fletzy track. And for the shed, for the exhibition layout, I need another point. There might be four points on layout. There might be three. It's got to be a simple station um, and two sidings. One siding's got to go into a shed, which I'm building. If you saw the Titfield Thunderbolt, they um, they kind of carry this steel barn and they pull it at the end of their station. That's where they park the train at night. That's kind of what I'm doing. And behind that, there's going to be a, like a tarp hole frame then. And that's where they work on the engines and paint the wagons and that. So that's where the trains will be kept. And there's quite... Um, I've already decided on a track plan, I think, now, and it works really well. There's a quite big edge shunt, enough to store any any engine with this coach, even the Mark 1, and a wagon 
uh, like a brake van at the end. It can go on the edge, shouldn't the edge shouldn't long enough for that for the side in. So that's good. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. That's that's the update. I've showed you the wagons. Um, I showed you some of the stuff I'm working on. I showed you the point work, the electrics. That's all working fine. Uh, I do need to get a wide point actually. That's one of the points I'm getting. And I got a name for the railway. I won't say just yet, but I have got a name and I'm really pleased with it. Marble Bridge is just the station in the shed, the exhibition layout. The actual name for the railway is different. And yeah, that is basically it. I will just show you before I leave my 14 XX, 1420. So bear with me. And he does work. He, he worked all along. Um, He's a bit noisy, but the chassis and everything is scratch built by the person who had it before me. But there he is. There he is running. Um, you can expect to see a lot with the towed brake van. And to finish off, I think I will couple these two together just to show you that I can do that. Um, so I will have to hold the wagon just to get hold of the hook but there we go and that's it couple it up together and yeah So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think. Do you like what's gonna uh, what I'm telling you about the layout? Do you think it's gonna be a great idea, a good idea? Um, do you like the rolling stock I'm working on? Do you have any suggestions? Because I'm open to suggestions. If you do O gauge, and you're watching these videos, please let me know what you think. Tell me some ideas. I'm got open mind on all this. So thanks for watching, and bye until next time.